So in this video, we're going to figure out how to solve circuits in a much more quicker, much more efficient way than we have by writing uh, lots of equations and lots of unknowns. And the way to see how that could be is by asking a rather interesting question. What is the source C? And of course, uh, voltage sources and current sources don't have eyes, but I'll show you what that means. When you go down the path of asking what the source C is, that leads to the concept of equivalent circuits, one of the most powerful concepts in circuit theory. And we'll explore series and parallel combinations and learn how to think about circuits in terms of these uh, structural components. Let's go back to our example that we uh, did last time. Uh, the, uh, we have a series combination of resistors and a voltage source. And what we calculated last time was the output voltage was proportional to the input voltage with the constant proportionality that's the resistor R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And this, uh, as I pointed out last time, is called voltage divider. And that applies any time you have a series combination of resistors and you apply a voltage across them voltage across one of them is that resistance divided by the sum of the resistances. That's a rule that you can use to simplify your life. I asked you last time what was the voltage across R1 and I think it's pretty clear by the apply voltage divider it's the resistance of the resistor I'm talking about divided by the sum times the very easy to see, and of course by KVL, this and this have to add up to be VN, so everything checks out. Well, what is the source C? And what do I mean by that? The voltage source in this case certainly um, uh, knows what its voltage is. The question is, it gets to C through the current. So the idea is I'm going to put the resistors in a box so that the voltage source can't cheat. The only thing it can do is uh, figure out its uh, current, the current coming into the box, I1, and uh, based on what that, how that's related to the voltage source, figure out what's inside the box. Well, we know that V out is uh, equal to this. And we want to know the current I1, but KCL says that I1 is equal to I out. That's the way it always works out for a series combination. The current goes straight through them, and so it's easy to see if the currents are all the same. Well, I can figure out I out from V out by simply dividing by R2, and that's what I get. So, what does the voltage source see? Put it in a box all the world, the relationship between the source voltage and the current that it's supplying to the circuit looks like that of a resistor. A single resistor having a value equal to the sum. And that's the idea of what's called an equivalent circuit. So, what does the source see? It looks in here through its current and it sees something that behaves just like a single resistor whose value is the sum of the resistances. Of course, it doesn't know if there's a sum. It might see a resistor that looks like one kilo ohm. It doesn't know how many resistors, or if there's only one resistor in there. That could equally be, well be the case. But the equivalent resistance of a series combination is the sum of the resistances. You can really use that to simplify your calculations for circuits. And by the way, this result all comes from the VI relations, KVL and KCL, putting them in a much more concise, understandable form when we think about equivalent circuits. So, like I said, it's a single resistor. Now, let's try another simple circuit. And this one has what's called a parallel structure. We have 
three circuit elements in parallel beside each other connected together with wires and that's called a parallel uh, circuit. So we have two resistors in parallel and a current source has been placed in parallel with that. And what I want to do is I want to find out how the output current, the current through R2, is related to the input current. Well, how many nodes, how many loops are there for writing KVL? And you should see that there are two nodes. There's a big node here and a big node down there, but we're only going to write uh, KCL at that node. And there are two loops. So uh, we get exactly the number of equations we need. We have two VI uh, relations, uh, the, and the third one is the for the current source. We have the KCL equation. The one KCL equation, we have two uh, KVL equations. One thing to point out is that when you have um, resistors in parallel, it's pretty clear that the voltage across them, each of them is the same. And since the current source is in parallel with that, all the voltages here, all the voltages are equal to each other. So that's not really a question. The question is, what is this current and how it's related to IN? Well, all we have to do is uh, put it all together it's not hard to show that this is the result, and the way you do that is by um, looking at this uh, set of equations here, the VI relations. Because these two voltages are equal, these two quantities are equal, and I can substitute for I1 in this equation by solving this set for I1. What I get is I1 is equal to R2 over R1 times I out. And if I substitute that in there and solve, I will get this result. And this is known as a current divider, as you might expect. So in a parallel circuit, if you have a current going in, it splits between the two resistors such that the, the current through this resistor is the other, the value of the other resistor divided by the sum. And so it works in a similar way to voltage divider, except it's not the resistance of the element you're talking about, it's the other resistor. Okay, so uh, what does this look like? Well, again, because we get that for the input-output relationship. Well, the only way the, the current source can see what's going on is to look at its voltage. Well, that voltage is just that. Well, that's again the VI relationship for a resistor. It looks like a single resistor whose resistance is the product over the sum. And I use this shorthand notation for that for that result. So R1 parallel R2 means R1 R2 divided by the sum of R1 and R2. So again, what the source sees is a single resistor. It does not know that there are two resistors in there. All it can tell, it looks like one resistor. So the, the series and parallel combination structures are very important to recognize to help you simplify and see what's going on. So let's go through this little exercise here. I'm not going to tell you if I'm what kind of source I'm going to attach out here. It doesn't really matter. The question is, what does the source see? Well, we have to figure out the structure first. It's clear that R1 is in parallel with all of this. Well, what's all of this? I see R2 in parallel with R3 up there, and then that's in series with R4. And that's going to allow us to figure out what the equivalent resistance is. So, let's start with the parallel combination here. That looks like a single resistor whose value is R2 parallel 
R3. This 